So a quick job to do now is just to do this infill here. Anna's put some planters there just temporarily to stop the animals moving across. But we never really finished the the fencing. So I'm just going to run a little bit more of this picket fencing up to this point here and then terminate it uh, and fill that gap in. So having checked the workshop, I think I've got enough timber left um, to make a extension to the little dwarf balustrade. Let me just show you. Now I've cleared the area, the gap would look much better if it was bridged with the little dwarf stuff on the right rather than the picket fencing on the left. So I know I haven't got any of those upright posts, but I have got something similar, an old bed head, which I can use one of the ends from. And uh, we've got enough spindles and the top part, if you remember, was just decking, um, turned down, patterned down. So let's make some of that instead. Now these are the spindles, this one is a template cut to the same length as the others that are already there and uh, rather than have to measure each one I just put an end block up and it just means that when I've got a fresh end on here I can just run this up to the end, cut down like that and, and do that 16 times without having to measure each individual one. So here I'm just measuring out the top and bottom rail. The length of those is dictated by the size of the panel itself. And the gap in between the spindles needs to match. So I've made a block, which is the size of that gap. And I'm just using that to transfer those dimensions down onto this length. And then bolting those two together with clamps so I can transfer those dimensions onto the top rail so they both match exactly. Now in order to get the spindles to be central on the rails I've actually got a piece of plywood which is the required thickness and that just sits underneath those temporarily as I screw them in from below. And then I make my pilot and countersink holes for the top rail and screws directly down and then just use some three and a half inch screws driving straight down into the end of the spindle. So I'm just taking the old solar lamp off, that'll come off temporarily and uh, what I'm now doing is I'm cutting a mitre 45 degree cut because I don't like end boards to end board square, they look a bit messy. Okay, I've got all my pieces ready. Just made a post out of this old um, headboard. And, uh, that's going to go in at the end, just here, like that. Got my bolts ready for that. Obviously, the rail is ready. And then you've seen that I've cut this uh, top board off uh, at 45 degrees, ready for the new one to, to scarf into that. So we're just on the assembly stage now. Post on, uh, then the rail in, and then the capping on. So I'm just bolting the vertical post that goes into the joist in the side of the decking frame, squaring that up so it's vertical. And then I'm just uh, temporarily putting some blocks on top of that rail, just to hold it in place for me and make sure it's nice and continuous. And then again, just screwing through the end post directly into the top and bottom rail. So just creating some pocket screws for the rails. They need to go in blind, uh, so you won't see those. And then the top rail goes on really neatly now. And that's screwed straight through to the top rail, making that nice and stiff as well. That stiffens that whole structure up. Gives it like a T section. 
And then to finish it off, to give the top rail some thickness, we use some batten, just some roofing batten, and the batten goes underneath. So it, it gives the impression that that top rail is much, much thicker than it actually is. Makes it look a bit beefier, which is quite nice. So I'm just screwing that again blind from underneath so you don't see the screws. And then just popping the end cap on just to finish it off. So when you look at from the house towards the end, you can see it there, the bottom left, it gives that impression of thickness all the way through. And then just a light sanding just to take any of the rough edges away. You can sit on that rail, it's strong enough to sit on, so the sanding helps take away the, the, the rough splint, splinters. And then finally the solar lamps go back on. I've got a spare one there which uh, is the additional one. So there it is, it's actually come out okay. I should put a link to the original video where we built all this um, balustrade out of rotten old wood, but uh, it's absolutely fine for a little extension. And I think the geese love it. That's where I scarfed in the old and the new there. The only thing that's playing with my mind is that I had to exactly work out the number of spindles and that dictated the end gap there, which is different to that one there. That's the only thing that uh, slightly worries me, but for what it is, it's absolutely perfect. So I've got the geese and the frogs giving me a thank you very much. Can you hear them? Absolutely glorious. We've got a chap in the air today doing acrobatics from the local airport. Just about hear him, which is quite nice. So, hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the next project.